So this is going to be my third time recording this video because the other two times things didn't go right, the video got lost, and I have to start over. So hopefully third time's the charm. Today I wanted to talk about different experiences that I've had with healthcare professionals because as a trans person I feel like there's definitely been a lot of lack of communication and a lot of things that I would wish for them to improve on. So this is meant to be kind of like a both sides video where I give my experiences and say this is something you can learn but also if you're trans like me this is something that you could expect to witness in your future. So let's get right into it. Why stall? Um, the first one that I want to talk about is when I went to a dermatologist. Um, the thing is, when you're on testosterone, it can give you acne. And so I had acne that looked kind of like what I have right now, where there's just kind of dots places. Nothing too big, nothing too fancy. I don't know why I would describe it as fancy. Um, but I wanted it to go away because... Nobody really likes having acne. So I went to the dermatologist and they sent me up with the main doctor and an assistant who was learning. She was doing an internship or something. She was learning. She was talking about me very loudly right outside the door so I could hear her talking about me. And you're like, yeah, it's fine. They can talk about me because how else are they going to communicate about the patient? But the thing was, A... She was calling me by the wrong pronouns, and she kept saying, she has this, she this. And you could hear the doctor, the actual dermatologist, correcting her and saying, no, he, you say he, but she kept going. B, she was saying that I had severe acne. I looked like this. So I think that part of her was a little biased and didn't want to have me as a patient, but there's more. Um, she's talking to me and she was saying things like, well, if it doesn't get any better, we're going to have to take you off your hormones. And she, the way that she said it, like with her inflection and everything, she made it seem like I was being punished for having acne or for being trans or for being on hormones. And um, that's super not cool. I feel like when somebody becomes a healthcare professional, they go into the field because they want to help people. That's what happens when you ask little kids, why do you want to be a doctor when you're older? They say, because I want to help people. They don't say, because I want to make a lot of money. Like, yeah, there might be those people who go into it because of that. But the main thing is that they want to help people. I feel like this should include people whose ideas you don't quite mix with. Everybody's going to do something that you might not, like... Not everybody's going to agree with everything at all times. Some people are going to make some decisions you don't like. And sometimes that decision is to transition. You should want to help your patients regardless of the decisions that they make in their life. You should not be judging your patients. Because when you judge your patients, they don't want to come to you for help. They want to go to somebody else who they feel like they can trust. So I feel like as a healthcare professional, you should be open to anybody because you should just want to help them. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, next is when I was going to the school wellness center at my college um, because I was having cold symptoms and I had a pain in my ear. So I was thinking, oh, I might have an ear infection. I should get some medicine for that. So I go in and the first red flag is that when I got there, they were like, oh, we thought you were already here. And it turned out that they had somebody in one of the rooms and they were calling him Charlie. And he was like, I'm not Charlie. And they were like, haha, you're so funny, Charlie. And they didn't believe him. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Um, but then when the actual doctor came in to see me, she hadn't even closed the door before. She's like, you're trans, right? And it was like... Hi, nice, nice to meet you too. Thanks for bringing up my genitals. Um, and then she went into this whole spiel about how I should always disclose to my doctors 
if I'm trans because they might misdiagnose me. And I agree with that. Um, I just feel like she didn't really give me the opportunity to talk about it. But also, I feel like it wasn't necessary for the information. She said, if you were burning while you were peeing, I would diagnose you as having an STI and not a UTI. But I wasn't there because I had burning while I was peeing. I understand where she's coming from and the intent that she had and everything. But I just didn't feel like it was necessary given the situation. And the fact that she didn't even ask me how I was doing or what my issue was before she brought up the fact that I was trans just felt like it was invasive and as though she wasn't treating me like a normal patient. And you could argue, yes, I am not a normal patient, but the thing is, everybody is different from each other. And so because everybody is different, you should understand that you're going to treat your patients differently depending on their situations. So really, treating the patients differently is treating them the same. Does that make sense? It probably doesn't, but that's what I'm trying to say. Sorry about my dog. She gets really excited. Um, so I feel like if you want to talk to me about my genitals, maybe, you know, ask me how my day is going first or something like that, because nobody wants to just walk in and be like, hi, do you have a penis? It's just not appropriate. Um, Speaking of, hi, do you have a penis? Um, the next situation I'm going to talk about is when I went to the gynecologist. And this is kind of personal, but I'm putting it out there because I feel like this is something that people can learn from. Um, I went into the gynecologist because I was having pain with penetration. And I was thinking that they might tell me it's because of hormones, because that is something that can happen where... Um, you can kind of tighten up a little bit and then it hurts when you receive penetration. But this was something that had been going on before I had hormones. So I was like, I should probably get this checked out. Um, the first thing that happened was he was like, I'm going to do an examination of you. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. And um, I was scared because penetration hurts. So I say, is this going to hurt? And the assistant doesn't skip a beat. She says, no, it's not going to hurt. Even though I just told her that I was having pain with penetration and he's saying, I'm going to penetrate you. I'm going to stick my fingers inside of you, which is exactly what you said hurts. So it felt like she wasn't really taking me seriously and what I was talking about seriously. But even worse than this, um, first of all, it did hurt. Um, but worse than this... Um, he said that he didn't want to diagnose me because he said that I was going to be having surgery anyway. Now, I did eventually get surgery, but the thing was, at this point in time, I hadn't decided about whether I wanted surgery or not. I was very much on the fence about it, and I felt it was really unfair for this doctor to be assuming that I was going to be transitioning this way when I wasn't, because not everybody transitions the same way. Some people go through different processes, some people skip steps, some people take steps that most people don't take. There's a lot that goes into transitioning and you cannot assume that everybody transitions the same way. So he didn't diagnose me because he assumed the way I was going to transition. Um, so really the big takeaway that I have for that is just don't assume. You know, they say it makes an ass out of you and me. Oh, it's so funny. I, I really like that quote. Um, but the next situation is after I did get this surgery, um, it was giving me some really bad headaches right in the back of my head. The worst pain I've ever felt. Um, maybe not the worst, but it was up there. And it was this constant headache that was just, it just felt like the stabbing in the back of my skull. So I went to the hospital in the middle of the pandemic that's how bad it was. I usually have a pretty high pain tolerance. I've gotten piercings. I've gotten tattoos. I've never really had a problem with that. Um, I stab myself every other week and I'm fine with it. But this was something where I went to the hospital. And when I got there, there is a nurse and she was asking me questions. And she says, oh, you just had a surgery? You want, like, can you tell me more about that? And I'm like, yeah, I had a vaginectomy. And she says, oh, like the removal of a vagina? And I said, yes. And she says, then how do you pee? 
I said through my urethra. I said I pee through my urethra because, you know, the urethra and the vagina are two different things. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, I feel like that as a woman and as a healthcare professional, she should have known this. Um, but I also feel like it was a little weird because then she was asking me more about my transition. And I understand that. I like ask, like answering people's questions because I feel like not everybody knows about this stuff. But I feel like as a healthcare professional, you should be able to research these things on your own. You should be able to keep up to date on that. That's when I come to the next person that I saw in the hospital who was asking me about my medical history. And she says, have you had any surgeries? And I said, yeah, I've had a few. And she says, oh, do you have a condition? And I said, no, I'm just trans. And she says, what's that? It's 2020. We've had many famous people come out as trans. We've had a lot of different like breakthroughs in the trans community about being recognized and like getting health care and stuff. Like there's been a lot of debates about whether we should be allowed in the restrooms, in the military. And she had no idea what a trans person was. And I feel like at this point, that's just because you don't want to know. Like maybe, maybe I shouldn't be assuming and saying that, but I feel like you should be receiving updates on information. If they came out with a new method to treat depression or to cure cancer, wouldn't you want to know what those treatments are for the sake of your patients? She did not know what trans was. She was not keeping up to date with the information for people she would be dealing with on a daily basis, whether she knew about it or not. And that's all I want to say about that. Um, so I guess the big takeaways that I have today, because I'm going to stop it here, is that um, treat us like people. Don't assume what our transitions are going to be like. Um, maybe try not asking us too many personal questions, because while some of them, some of them, I get it, some of them you might have to ask for your questionnaires, but like, these people that I was dealing with, they weren't writing anything down. They weren't looking at any papers. They were just talking to me about it. And it made me feel like I was more like under a microscope than, you know, sitting in a chair in front of them. And it kind of dehumanizes you when you do that. And, you know, we aim for equality. Um, so just listen, sometimes you got to put your own personal ideas aside so that way you can give your patients the best treatment that you can give them. Sometimes you need to swallow your pride. Sometimes you need to realize that you might not know everything. And from there, you can learn. You can be better. You can help people more than you could have the day before. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today.